I am a diehard Linux fanboy. I don't think that that will come as a surprise to anyone who has seen my channel. I literally have Tux hanging on my wall back there and have had for a few years now. So I really like Linux. I make videos about Linux. I talk about Linux constantly on my social media channels. I like Linux a lot. But I try not to be too judgy when it comes to people who use Windows. Uh, because a lot of people don't like Windows, but they are forced to use it for various reasons. And, you know, I understand that from a certain perspective because, like, I have to have a Google account because of work and stuff. So I have to use Google, so I, too, have to spend my time with an evil corporation. We all have to make sacrifices to do the work that we have to do in order to feed our families and all that stuff, right? So if you have to use Windows, I try not to be too judgy about it. But there are, surprisingly, a number of people out there who genuinely like Windows. I don't understand these people. It's like people who don't like Star Wars or Star Trek. Like, I can understand liking one or the other, but liking neither of them doesn't really make sense to me. Or people who don't like pizza. Like, I'm sorry, but pizza's God's food. You should definitely like it. I don't understand if you don't, right? People like Windows. Or some at least some people really like Windows. And I don't understand these people. And, well, most of the time I try to think, well, you know, people like what they like and that's just fine. It doesn't pain me or cause me any real issues if other people like what they like. So just let them go about their lives and be wrong. And, you know, it's fine, right? Well, I'll just continue on making my Linux videos and be happy. I'm a Linux nerd. I can be considered a Linux elitist. I won't deny that. But I try to at least just let it flow by me, right? But that doesn't mean that I don't... Don't try from time to time to get people to use Linux if I possibly can. It's one of the reasons why I make so many videos is I try to, with my videos, make it clear how good Linux has become over the years. To try to fight back against some of the stereotypes that have developed because of the poor hardware compatibility and software compatibility of yesteryear. A lot of that stuff is no longer present. You can use Linux basically like you use Windows now on basically any hardware and it works out of the box. Now, do we still have some software blind spots? Sure. You know, we don't have the Adobe products. We don't have easy access to Microsoft Word. So there are a couple big ones that don't aren't here. But we have alternatives to those things that are at least almost as good or at least good enough, right? So I try with my videos to put forth Linux in a positive light in hopes that eventually, or at least sometimes, it will draw some people into Linux from Windows. Because I think that Windows is a terrible product, not in that it doesn't function well, but that it doesn't treat its users humanely. It's an evil piece of crap, if you will. And there are many different examples of this. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about, or at least... Let's, let me put it this way. I'm going to today I'm going to talk about one more reason why you should definitely use Linux and not Windows. And that reason is this one right here. So we're starting to see more and more blog posts in the mainstream media like this one, where people who have been covering Windows for a very long time are slowly awakening to the idea that Microsoft isn't a good steward of their operating system Th that microsoft is more focused on building up their market share in certain pieces of software and services than actually creating a good product we're seeing more articles like this one now this one in particular is just another example of microsoft doing something shady on Windows in order to get you to use their software or their services. So in this case, what Tom Warren is saying from The Verge is that he has discovered that Microsoft is creating pop-ups inside of Windows when you have Chrome installed and are using Chrome as your default web browser and your default search engine. They're putting actual pop-ups like 90s style web pop-ups on your desktop in order to try to get you to use Bing instead, to try to get you to use Microsoft Edge instead. And this is something that they've actually pushed out to a lot of people. A lot of people have seen this. It's been going on for months, but it's obviously not new. Microsoft has, basically since Windows 10, if not before, tried to push their products onto you 
in a shady fashion. So they've gone so far as to make it almost impossible to switch from Edge to Chrome or Firefox or whatever. If you want to do so, you have to basically walk across coals in order to get that to work. And they've actually, after an update, switched you back to Edge sometimes. They do that at least once or twice a year to some people. Not everybody, but some people, right? And that's obviously just one thing that they've done. They've also gone and put a ton of advertisements inside of Windows. Now, some people will argue, well, yeah, I'm getting Windows for free. I probably shouldn't care that there are some ads so Microsoft can make money to do this, whatever, right? That was some of the arguments when Ubuntu decided to put Amazon referral links inside of Ubuntu. I'm getting Ubuntu for free, therefore I should try to support. Pissed a lot of people off, but some people really understood. The problem with Windows doing it is that Windows isn't free, actually. Just because you don't pay money you know, directly to Microsoft doesn't mean that you're not paying somewhere along the line. The manufacturer of your PC has no doubt paid Microsoft you know, $100 or more for the license that is on your machine. That money is then baked into the cost of the hardware. Or if you've built your own PC, you'll know that you've had to buy a license in order to use Windows on your PC. Or if you're like me, you probably have only bought Windows exactly one time in your life and you just keep using the same mostly legally obtained license over and over and over and over again. I don't do that anymore. So Microsoft, if you're watching this, I got away with it, nana nana boo boo. I'm a Linux user now, we don't have product keys. We don't need product keys. We don't need no stinking product keys. Uh, so uh, there's that. But anyways, the point of this video is that Linux doesn't do this shit. Linux just does not do pop-ups, okay? Linux doesn't push software on you at all, okay? Now, some people would say, well, Matt, yeah, they kind of do. If you're using Ubuntu, they do kind of push snaps onto you. And if you're using Fedora, they kind of force you to use flat packs. But do they really? I mean, if you want to, you can uninstall snaps on Ubuntu. I've seen people do it. I've done it myself. You can easily do it. And once it's done, no more snaps. You can just uninstall SnapD and it's gone from your machine forever. And it's fantastic. Now, obviously, there are going to be some situations where you kind of do some workarounds if you're going to install something from a different certain repository that may end up pulling SnapD back in as, as, as a dependency. So it's a little funky. And I would say that that is kind of shady of Canonical to do that. But if you don't really like that, you have other alternatives. You can go use Fedora or Arch or Gentoo or Linux from scratch or whatever you want to do. You have tons of options if the distro you're using does shady crap. With Windows, all you have options are is Windows or moving to a different platform like Mac OS or Linux. And obviously Mac OS has its own problems. So the point is, is that even if you think Windows functions great, and I'm not going to argue that, when you try to get work done, as long as the tool works well for you, that's all that anybody can ask for. And a lot of people prefer the way Windows works. And you cannot deny, even as a Linux fanboy, you can't deny that Windows has a ton of software available to it. And a lot of that software is not available for Linux. And that is something that draws a lot of people into using Windows. You can't deny that. But what Windows fanboys can't also deny on the other side of things is that Windows has become a dumping ground for shady tactics to get you to use as many Microsoft services and products as possible. And even if you don't see a bad thing about that, which I don't understand how you couldn't possibly think that that was bad. The worst part about it is that you can't disable any of this stuff, right? Even if you t during install choose no telemetry whatsoever, Microsoft is still sending telemetry outside of your network to their servers and using it for whatever they want. They've always been doing that. Obviously, that's nothing new, but they continue to push the envelope to do more and more stuff in order to get you to use as many of their services as possible. Basically, what you're seeing here is the internet on your operating system, on your local operating system. And what I mean by that is that the internet has become inundated with advertisements so much so that people created ad blockers. Can you imagine a day when you have to have an ad blocker to use your operating system before you even get to the internet? I can imagine that day happening quite soon. The problem is, is that I don't think that you could 
do that very easily without a whole bunch of registry edits. And of course, Microsoft, just like Google does with ad, ad blockers, would try to constantly play whack-a-mole with that piece of software in order to get the, your their ads shown to you no matter what, because you can't turn them off. This new pop-up that they're talking about, you can't turn it off, okay? At least without doing, I'm sure, some things will violate their terms of service, I'm sure. Any of the advertisements that you have on there, you can probably get rid of them, but that's not the way Microsoft wants you to use their product, right? It's basically like using an ad blocker. It definitely violates the terms of service. So the biggest issue with Windows, the number one reason why you should not use Windows and you should at least consider using Linux is that Linux isn't shady. They're not run by evil corporations. Yes, we have some corporations. Yes, we sometimes call them evil. But if you compare Canonical, you compare Red Hat to Microsoft, they sure do look not so evil, in my opinion, at least, right? And also, even if you don't want to use a corporate distro, we have other options for you. We have Arch, we have Debian, we have things like that that aren't corporate-backed. So if you want options like that, you can find them. And that's really the do the whole point, is that on Linux, you have options and... None of them are really evil options. So if you are one of those folks who use Windows and you are sick of Microsoft doing their damnedest to ruin your experience with all of the pop-ups and the advertisements and the telemetry, give Linux a try. It's really not that hard to install anymore. It's not something that you're going to have a hard time getting running on your computer. If you're using a mainstream distribution, Everything is probably just going to work. Spend the first couple weeks trying to find alternatives to the software that you use because you will have to find alternatives. That's probably the biggest hurdle for most people. So, you know, you have to if you if you're a Photoshop user, you have to go find an alternative to Photoshop. If you're you're a Microsoft Word user, you have to go find an alternative to your Office suite. All of those things are possible. It just takes a little bit of effort and the willingness to do so and the willingness to learn new things, as I always say. So, if you are a Windows user, use Linux. You'll be happy you did. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I was without power for basically six days, five or six days. Uh, and uh, that's why this video was a little bit more rambling than normal. It turns out if you take five or six days off, you'll learn, you completely lose the ability to talk in a straight line. So things become circles. What can I do about it? Anyways, if you want to, I don't even remember the ending. How do I, how do I do the, how do they do the endings anymore? I don't remember. Uh, oh, I totally forgot. If you haven't, if you haven't already, leave a thumbs up on this video. We'll start there. It really does help the channel. I do appreciate it. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can support me on Kofi at kofi.com slash the linuxcast. That's ko-fi.com slash the linuxcast. Uh, both of those platforms are good if you want to support me. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon, YouTube, and Kofi. I really do appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, you guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just won't be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. See, once you do this, it's like kind of riding a bike. You just kind of get back on. And yeah, the first few times are a little bit wobbly. But after that, you just go on and it's smooth as a, you know, whatever. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.